<laughs> hi guys welcome back to the channel once again my name is dumebilia if this is your first time coming across my channel you're welcome please subscribe and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back so today's video is something that i wish every member of the african diaspora can come across because it is a very important message i feel like this is something really important because it kind of helps us to have a rethink and evaluate and understand why is it that we're not getting along why do we have this preconceived notions about each other as black people different groups of black people not getting along with different groups of black people anyway i'm just going to play this video right now and it was by a jamaican woman and i'll come back after so we can talk about it so i want to respond to this quickly because i need people to understand that one of the reasons that jamaicans and other african diaspora people react to african americans and talk about africans are African Americans in a way they do is because this was taught to us by white America. This is part of what I'm studying now in my graduate program. When they first started to recruit people to come to work here, right, about five or six decades ago, they told them that the African Americans were lazy people and they did not want to work. Meanwhile, at that time, it was because they didn't want to pay African Americans more money. They wanted to give them slavery wages. But African Americans w were trying to hold out for more pay. Instead of paying African Americans more, what they did was recruit black people from the Caribbean at that time controlled by Britain. So it was very easy for them to convince Britain that, hey, send those people who are down there with no jobs to our country to work. And when they came here, the white farm owners and those agricultural people told them and ingrained in them that the reason that they have to come to work is because African Americans don't want a job, right? They went back home and they carried the same message and told the people there. And so this is a trope that has been passed on for for um, decades and decades, year after year, as more and more come. That is, that is what they care because that's what they have been told. Now, when you come and you live amongst African Americans, and if you really look into the history and look at the systemic, you'll know that that, that is not true. But then you also realize how difficult it is when someone grew up and was taught a certain kind of saying or a certain kind of belief is very difficult to get it out of them so i personally i know that it is not true i know that it's because people want decent wages for the work that they do but yeah it is absolutely true that a lot of caribbean people jamaicans included and other diaspora people have bought into this trope that african americans are lazy basically when the jamaicans were being brought into america to work they kind of conditioned them to believe that the african american people were less than that they were lazy and this was simply because in my opinion they wanted them to not get along you know when you're coming with a preconceived notion about a group of people you're probably going to be coming with that notion that oh they are lazy so i'm better off than them i deserve more I don't need to relate with them so that they don't tarnish my image so that i'm not associated with them so that i'm not being looked at as the same so i believe it just created a divide and this is just in terms of being lazy as it relates to employment right in other social aspects we're talking about when it comes to you know behavior when it comes to culture and all of that somehow different groups of black people have been taught to look at the african-american community in a certain way not only were they told to stay away from the black americans but in one of the books i read in the migrant labor course they had this story about a group of jamaicans who went to a bar this is in the 1960s you know in the heights of civil rights and because being from a black majority country they're not used to being to being treated um as less than so when they went to the bar the white people didn't want to serve them the Jamaicans, not used to being told that they can't be served because they are black, started to create a ruckus and created a big deal. A group of Jamaicans jumped a counter in a South Jersey restaurant and began breaking dishes when they realized that they were being refused service. British and U.S. officials and even growers stepped in to protect them. When the manager of the South Jersey restaurant 
called Seabrook Farms to ask what to do about Jamaican's dish-breaking protest, John Seabrook told him, feed them. It is difficult to imagine many farm employers doing the same for African Americans in 1943. In the book, they pointed out that had this been black Americans who had done this, the outcome would have been completely different. Because the Jamaicans at the time were just happy to work. They didn't realize that they were all part of a strategic imperialistic plan against black Americans in America. Here is the book if you ever want to read it. I'm Nigerian and I can speak from my own point of view. We've been taught to look at African Americans not only as lazy, we look at them as, you know, having the whole baby mama culture, as being rough and violent, promoting gang banging, using drugs, getting incarcerated. This is what we see. This is not only what, what we are being told, this is also what we see in the media. Speaking from the point of view of the African community, I'm going to be playing this clip right now, which is also sending the same message that I'm talking about in this video. And this clip is from a Nigerian TV talk show, The View, and they discussed, you know, this issue about the way we as Africans view African Americans. I'll play it and I'll be right back. I can't categorically say every Nigerian got this talk, but a lot of Nigerians that travel abroad got this talk from their family, where they will sit you down and tell you, you are going there. Don't go and talk to those black Americans. Though. You just go and get pregnant. You get into drugs. You get you start become the gang banging. They give you that talk. That just go to the white community, find a nice place. Be, they just and go be and decent. be and be, be decent. Mm. Stay with the white people. They give you that talk. Mm. So when you enter America, you already have a perception of African Americans. You judge them, and of course they can see that judgment in your behavior towards them. And they see how you are almost like yes, ma yes, master to the uh, to the Yibos. They see they're not blind. So when they when they have that um, feeling of um, um, when when they become defensive when you're in their presence, it's because they see that perception you have of them. So I know I got that talk, and a lot of Nigerians got that talk. So we are over there, we are doing well, we are doctors, we are building houses, we are feeling like, yeah, so we've come to the land of the living, we are the land of the plenty, and we are doing well. <laughs> Forgetting that some people sacrificed mm, for, for you to even go there in the first place. Mm. So is that acknowledgement that the African-American community are expecting of us, especially those of us living abroad in America? Okay. Can I say so you guys see that it's quite sad, like to think that it's so bad to the extent that if you're maybe a young person going to america to further your education maybe for university and all whatnot when you're being seated down by your parents like for the farewell pep talk they will tell you how you should avoid the black americans don't try to be like them don't copy their lifestyle don't try to talk like them we do not want you getting into their kind of lifestyle the baby mama culture we do not want you going into gang banging and all of that why would they say that they will say that because that is already the way we perceive them that is the way we have been taught to view them these are the stereotypes that have been ingrained in us and i'm grateful for the fact that now the world is the global village being that you can actually make use of the internet and see real life black american people african american people and you realize that these people are not as bad as they make them look i've never been to america but thankfully um because of content creation i've been able to mingle with other content creators you know thanks to the internet and i realized that these african american people are not half as bad as they make them look some of them are well educated some of them are hard working they are go getters they are nice they are friendly you know so i'm like so where are these stereotypes coming from where are they coming from and i know where it's media and i won't even blame it on white media no it's not i won't say that because even till today pop culture is also part of the problem pop culture actually perpetuates a lot of these stereotypes you see a lot of the baby mama thing happening even in the rap music you see they talk about gangsterism and you know glorifying a lot of things that should not be glorified you see a lot of the reality tv shows you see people jumping on each other you see them fighting screaming at the top of their 
their voice, doing a lot of things. So yes, pop culture, present day media has contributed to these stereotypes. It's only now that thanks to the internet, we have the opportunity to have a feel of what other black people in the diaspora are like. And we realize that, oh, some of these stereotypes are not true. And the funny thing is these stereotypes and these lies that we were told about the African-Americans was also told to the African-Americans about us. African-Americans and talk about Africans or African-Americans in a way they do is because so um, go watch that video. What is really difficult for me to take away in hearing people say that as rationale is that they said the same things about you. How does someone believe a person or a group of people knowing full well they said and say the same things about you? Why would you believe them? And I wonder how many people stopped and said, wait, this person that's also oppressing me is saying these bad things about these people? Hmm, maybe I shouldn't believe them. Maybe I can give grace to older generations, right? Maybe I'll give grace to that. But it is difficult for me to say in the year of our Lord, 2022, people are still believing this. I need people to understand. You know, this reminds me I went to Africa and my idea of what Africa is supposed to look like was shattered when I finally saw Africa. I was like, yo, this is not what I uh, recall. So I get what she's saying. Media, Western, you know, media tells us the most negative things about us. And I think on both sides, this is what gets me is because now we have so much access to each other that we shouldn't be having that. I know the older generations, they still have that struggles. I mean, even, you know, here in America, we, they still have that struggle. But when I hear younger people say it, it's like, you know, that's not true. Especially if you live over here, just because your parents say this means it's not true. Like, we have so much interaction with each other for you to even say it. So, I'm glad someone's throwing it out there because it's just dumb. In the media, when they portray Africa, they portray Africa as one very poverty-stricken community filled with half-naked babies, having kwashoko and all of that. And that is not the way it is. So, it's just funny to me that these lies are being told to the African diaspora in the Caribbean community and also told to the Africans back home here in Africa. And I feel like it's all a divide and conquer technique. When you make us believe that we cannot relate to each other because we're better than our brothers and sisters, when we really are not they know that we're going to eventually have an opportunity to come together as a people and we're going to be stronger as a people so what do they do they do divide and conquer they tell us oh these ones are lazy don't relate with them you know they just formulate lies and tell you guys that this is the way we are and without even having any interaction with each other we just hate each other right off the bat you now have one black community feeling like they're better than the other black community and at the end of the day we look at ourselves as competitors we look at ourselves as rivals we look at ourselves as being better better than the next black community which should not be if anything when black people move to the diaspora there should be a diasporic unity there should be that harmony when we see each other as brothers when we see each other as cousins it's just really sad to me because i feel like this is why we will always not be united as a people as long as these stereotypes exist as long as these lies exist we will always be segregated all these things all this segregation basically just promote white supremacy that is what gives them that pedestal that is what they are using to their advantage because united we stand and divided before as long as we are divided we will not be able to rise above all these things as a people so this is why we really need to take time to build that relationship i'm all for black people everywhere uniting in marriage in business in whichever way possible those who want to move back to africa do that those who want to visit do that those who want to intermarry do that those who want to build businesses together do that when you see a black cause support it no matter the part of the world you are because at the end of the day we are one people and we need to break away from these stereotypes and these divisions that have been created and one thing i need to state is that you see all the opportunities that we african diaspora from other parts of the world come to america to seek these are opportunities that we need to acknowledge the efforts of the african americans for america was built on the hard work and the sweat and the blood of the ancestors of the black americans that we see today so we need to understand that without them we might not have those opportunities so we are basically riding on the back of the sweat and the tears of these people that were 
were there before us we need to acknowledge that so you guys um i think i should wrap up this video here i believe this is a very powerful message let me know if you agree just let me know your comments in the comment section please give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys in my next video bye